Hi there, this is Andy. Uh, today I'm going to be assembling the Martha Stewart craft cart with four pull-out slides. I'm going to do it in real time so you guys can watch and build at the same time. And at the end of this, we'll both end up with a great new craft cart. So I'm going to start by walking through the various parts. So if you can hand me the camera, I'll just kind of do that. Uh, and then I will hand the camera back to my great partner in a couple of moments. So um, looking at the card itself, you'll see there are basically two aspects to it. There's the cart body, which has a top. There's a little side brace here and a base there and two sides. And then there are four pull-out drawers. The nice thing is all of the drawers have essentially identical parts. The bottom one has larger pieces, but they are structurally the same, and the three top ones are perfectly identical. So there's three part G, three part H, so it makes it a lot simpler. So really and truly, once you start looking at the parts, it is quite a simple process. So we have two sides with the back in between. That's the first part we're going to assemble. Uh, the little base, structural base, and the little front beam. The top, and then these are the parts for the drawers. I kind of just sorted them to each drawer. So each drawer gets two sides, a back, and a front. And we'll look a little bit more about those parts a little bit later. And then there's also the bases of the drawer, which is what this is, and then the casters for the feet. The hardware to assemble is really quite straightforward and simple. You have the cam bolts. The cam locks, and if you look at the cam lock, I'll let you guys get a close-up of it now because I'll be using it later. There is an arrow with a plus and minus sign on one side. If you were to look on the top, you will see that that's where that little U-shape is, and that's what allows the cam bolt to lock, to go over the cam lock, clam, clam nut go over the clam bolt so that you can lock it in place. So you'll be mindful of that as you're inserting them. You have a whole bunch of screws that are mostly used for assembling the drawers. You have one slightly larger screw that holds the top down in the front. Four machine bolts uh, that hold the base in place. You'll see a few extra parts. The instruction manual, which you're well, there, it's just perfectly fine, um, but it doesn't have all of the tips and tricks that you'll get from the video. And they give you two little pools, tools. Um, this handy dandy little locking tool to lock down those cam nuts and an Allen wrench that you need for just for the machine bolts. I will in addition be using a drill with a number two bit screwdriver uh, for a lot of screwing in. You can certainly just use a regular Phillips screwdriver. A number two is the most common size. It's probably the one that you have in your uh, junk drawer at home. Um, and that should be it. And sometimes, instead of using to lock those cam bolts, you can use a flathead screwdriver that's the same size. I might go grab one of those uh, if one of them's giving me difficulty, but generally speaking, this little tool works just great. So I'm going to just go ahead and get started. I'm giving the camera back. And we'll make it kind of conversational as I do it, but I'm just going to assemble it uh, and show you guys the tricks that I use as I'm doing so. Almost all work on this side. So. <clears throat> In the instructions, it will tell you the first step is to assemble one of the sides to the base. Now, when you look at the side pieces, they are different. One has, I don't know the part numbers, one is B and one is C. Um, but it's pretty obvious which one goes where. Just there's little feet, and the little feet go on the bottom. So each one of these gets four of these cam bolts. There are six holes. The two bottom holes are slightly different size, and it can be confusing. You can end up messing those up. Don't use those two bottom holes by the feet. It's the four others that get the cam bolts. So one, two, three. And actually, that kind of illustrates one of the points I was going to make in a second. When they um, put this together at the factory, they paint it after the little um, anchors are in place. And so there's a little bit of paint that you have to work through. So sometimes they don't want to line up or start threading. You need to be very careful not to cross thread them. 
They do give you two extra cam bolts and two extra cam locks, but uh, they don't give you extra anchors, and digging the anchors out uh, would uh, always be problematic. So you do want to make sure you don't cross-thread them. Make sure you get a nice little start to the threading. And instead of just doing four, since I'm kind of in the moment of doing those, I'll do the other four on the other side. And I'm going to even do the six that go up on the top. They will have all of those bolts in place. And I'm just finger screwing them just to start the threads. And then I'm going to use my uh, screwdriver bit on the drill. An electric screwdriver would work certainly as well to uh, tighten these down. They have, a, looks like about maybe six or eight threads and then a little shoulder and you just screw down to that shoulder and it will kind of just lock in place. If you're not used to using an electric screwdriver, screwdriver of any sort, you just want to be a little bit careful um, that you don't over torque anything. So set your screwdriver or your drill to like its lowest torque and its lowest speed. And stop when you hit resistance. You know, better safe than sorry. Again, four on each side. Do not do the bottom two. Those are for those machine bolts. And then six on the top. The back of the top has two in each corner. And then the front of the top has one. And there's one other little hole without an anchor in it here, and that's for that one uh, slightly larger wood screw. So I've assembled four, five, six, seven of these so far. This will be my eighth. And I found that, by and large, the quality of the... Uh, of the way the, the pieces are put together, the way the jigs were put on and the holes were drilled out, seems to be dead on. I've not been having a lot of issues uh, with things squaring up or holes aligning or things being set to the right depth. So hopefully, you know, it is mass, any mass produced item you're gonna end up with the potential for a problem, but so far this looks really, these have been very good. I did have one of mine which had a kind of an obvious repair, uh, like in the manufacturing process where part of the wood had a hole in it, where they just kind of packed it in real quick, but it was on a back in the back corner of the back, so it was not going to show uh, unless you were really looking for it with your trays out. So I do know that they, are, they were willing to make compromises in the manufacturing process at the plant and not have everyone be 100% perfect seen some other tiny little defects here and there. But, you know, it's a storage piece. It's not fine furniture. During assembly, I've occasionally had little uh, mishaps of putting things on upside down and whatnot. So that's part of what this video will do, is kind of alert you guys to potential pitfalls, which way things need to go, and little tricks on getting the cam locks to lock in place easily and so forth. Okay, so to get the sides together, this side is going to go onto here. We've got the three cam bolts here, so we need the three cam nuts that correspond, cam locks that correspond. And the fourth one is going on the top here. You know what? There we go. So there's a potential pitfall right there. My back is backwards. So I was going to be putting it on backwards. The other two, I would have hopefully figured that out before I had gone too much farther. These other two holes are to help hold the top in place. And it's easy to know which way it goes because there's a sticker here. And the sticker should be facing uh, where you can read it, you know, from the bottom up. So it should be right side up. So 
now we are ready. These two are for the top, and then the rest are for here. Um, this one is for that guy. I'll show you in a second. Actually, I ignore what I just said there. That one, that one is for the little bar that goes across it. It's just these three to start with. Oh, if you look at the base, it, when I first unpacked one, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go on. It's very nicely paneled, where it's an inset panel on the back of the base here. So that's going to be towards the wall, or if you have it out in the middle of the room, it actually makes a very nice showy piece. So that's just going to go right on here. You just line your holes up and you drop it in place. The cam nuts on, on these, this section is really quite simple. You just kind of push them in flush. The holes are perfectly well aligned. I can rotate this for you guys to see a little bit better. I can lock this in. So when I put my cam nuts, my cam locks in, I made sure to align the arrow and that little U-shaped hole downwards so it would lock over that nut, that cam bolt, and you just give it a twist. I hold this down. You make sure that you're flush all, all the way down, because sometimes you have to play with these to get them to drop in. It's more of an issue with the top one, so we do it actually in a reverse order, which we'll get to in a little bit. But you push, push in firmly with your tool, push down, and then you'll get it to, you'll feel it lock in place, and you just kind of give it a quarter turn. And when it does lock in place, it kind of pulls it together, and you can see that it's pretty solid. Some of them want to go a quarter turn, some want to go a little bit less, some want to go a little bit more, but it will tell you when it's ready, it will tell you when it's done. It kind of just has to do with the angle of that particular uh, bolt. So that's that. The last one was for, as I said, that little cross piece. Find where I stuck it. And this is kind of the first tip and real pitfall assuming you don't put your top on backwards. On this piece, which is the cross brace at the front top of the finished piece, you have a hole that has a big side and a little side. That is for your wood screw, which is going to go through there to anchor, to provide one last anchor for the top to it. You need to make sure that your big hole is ultimately facing downwards. So, when I go here, this is my top over here. So if I go this direction, I have a big hole here. I can stick that big screw in and screw it right in. If I accidentally, and it's easy to do because it's just two-sided, put it on this way, then when I went to attach my screw, it wouldn't have worked. So be mindful that you have a counterset uh, just a hole here. So you need to make sure that that faces downwards towards the feet of your side. Okay. And just like the others, you can just pop the, what is the sawdust in there? Pop the um, arrow facing towards the hole, towards where that camera is, uh, straight in there. This one actually does counter set a little bit, but because it's just the one thing that you're trying to do by itself, you can wiggle it on there and make sure that it's nice and firm, double checking the holes on the right side, getting my tool, and Pushing in firmly and down a little bit, and you can kind of just feel it locking in place as you give it a nice little twist. Did not work. <laughs> so we'll try again. We line our hole up. Make sure we're the right direction. Make sure we're all the way on, and we did feel it lock in there. Now we are in place. One more little eighth of a turn, not even sixteenth of a turn, make it nice and firm. And we are halfway home. We are already ready to just drop this one in place, but we can go ahead and put our cam locks, or cam nuts in place. Same as before, flush mount 
with the arrow facing upwards towards the hole. When we assemble the top, what you'll find is these are nice because when you put them flush in, the jig was set up so that it's exactly the right depth when it's flush to the, uh, to the back wall surface. On the others, the walls are a lot thicker, and so the cams go down in, and you've got to find how deep to set them, and so you actually just do it reverse. You put the, the bolts in place first, and then you slide the cam over it uh, using that handy-dandy arrow groove that will let you do that. Uh, and there was one more for here. You can't see it. it's on the back side, so you don't see it later on, but there you go. And then it's a matter of taking the side and trying to place all four pieces at once. They line up reasonably well. This one is not too tricky. You just kind of want to eyeball it and take it slow. This has a little bit of play always in it. And so it will be kind of the last part to worry about. So just lining them up here. Make sure we drop all the way down. And at the same time, looking at that one, reaching it. And it doesn't want to nestle in yet, so we'll might have to wiggle with the cam on it. That went just fine. All four are in place. So, the order, I've tried different orders. I kind of like this top corner first because it's kind of one of the trickier ones to reach. And I kind of like doing that last one last because it's one of the easiest ones to deal with. Even though I messed it up before or did not lock in place at first from before. Slight pressure downwards just to make sure that we're in. And then firm pressure inwards with your tool. And really once you get to that last, the third one becomes even easier. And then we come to the one up here on the front. nicely that time. So everything is set. And we have most of the base kind of already in shape. We could put it upright if we wanted to, but let's just forge ahead. This is our extra anchor on the bottom side, and it goes together instead of with this cam lock with some machine screws. So it's really quite simple. Um, there's a longer side and a shorter side, so the longer side is going to go in to line up with the holes. You have a choice. You can go this way or this way. And so that's where you want to look for any imperfections. So there's always a little bit of roughness on that corner. And I don't see any, I didn't really see anything wrong with either of those, as it turns out. But it's where you do get to make a choice. You do have two sides. You can choose the prettier one and then the up and the down if you like. And you just line up, you can eyeball the holes. It's easy to see right down in there. You get your four machine screws and your Allen wrench. And if your dad ever taught you how to change a tire when you were a kid, he would have pointed out how uh, you tighten your lugs you know, all the way around, skipping every other one. I use kind of the same principle all the time and whenever dealing with anything that you're tightening down. You don't want to screw the first one in all the way tight. You want to just kind of finger tighten just a little bit all of them and then kind of just jump around a little bit but as you tighten them. It doesn't take that much more effort. If you don't like to work upside down, 
you can um, take the Allen, so if, and if you're unfamiliar, um, Allen wrenches are hexagonal, some people just call them hex wrenches and, and uh, hex bolts. You can put it in place there and it will lock in pretty easily. You might even have that bit to do it with, uh, with your electric screwdriver or drill. However, it really, there are just four. So since I got all four kind of started, I'm going to take that one almost to tight. I'm going to come across diagonally. This one to almost tight. Back and forth. And then on my fourth one here, I'll go ahead and tighten it all the way down. And then finish up all the way around. Just to make sure it's, everything's nice and square. So it's just a bent piece of hexagonal metal. You can, if you want more leverage, use the short side. It does fit. And I don't think it even causes any problems bumping into the uh, corner bracing. But if it did, you would just have to take it out and you know treat it like a ratchet. It looks like it would, actually. So I use the longer side then, and then I don't have to worry at all about that corner brace hitting. So it's like any other screw, righty tighty. Good to go. So our base is done, but for the top, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and attach the uh, caster wheels. They screw right in, just a machine screw. It has a wrench bit on it. It's a very, very skinny uh, little nub that's on there. Uh, and so it's, if you, can, you can start it with that if you really felt like you needed to. But they just twist right on, and it's really just done by hand. You'd have to have a very uh, specialized skinny little wrench to get it all the way tight if you were trying to extra tighten it. it. There's really no need. They just sit on the ground and go. You can do this all day long, and you will never tighten it, by the way. Because it, these are caster wheels, so you have ball bearings inside there. You actually have to hold the top of it. You can just kind of pinch it with your fingers and give it a twist. You sound like they, you did that before. I did not do that before. That is something <laughs> that I am aware of how they work. I've been to Ikea. I know caster wheels. I've had dollies and so forth. You could also leave those off if you wanted to stack that on top of the other one. Uh, it, there is not advised to stack them. There is nothing in the safety that allows for them to be stacked. Nothing in the specifications that allows them to be stacked. So I would hazard anybody who did anything like that would be doing it on their, at their own risk. I don't think it would even look very good. This one, I, I'm being careful not to cross thread because you always should. Again, there's a little bit of paint in there from when they spray, spray it. Uh, they've already got those anchors in place. There you go. You'll know if you're cross threading. If you're not used to assembling this sort of furniture, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Start over. All right, so we're halfway done. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it with them up. So I will just rotate the whole thing. Uh, I am working on some reasonably nice carpet. I sometimes work on the cardboard of them. You want something soft when you're moving it around. You don't want to ding your finish. And you're also just careful. You know, lift in place rather than slide and scratch. But a nice soft carpet is uh, very helpful in that regard. The trickiest part is upcoming and it's putting the top on. And it's really only tricky because... Okay, welcome back. Uh, the camera does stop after a little while, apparently. We reached the time limit on it. I'm finishing the last um, caster wheel in place, then we're going to do the top, which is technically the most challenging part of the assembly of the, really of the, whole, of the whole unit, certainly of the base. And it's only challenging because you have six bolts going into six holes at the same time. And even though they, generally speaking, are pretty square, the tiniest little inconsistencies in the angles of the anchors result in little inconsistencies in the angles of the cam bolts, and those can lead to problems getting with a, 
leading, getting it aligned, and the cams, the cam nuts, uh, are also can be set in too far on that or too shallow on that. And so, rather than putting the cam nuts in place, and what I've done in the past is you put the cam uh, nuts in place, shine a light in, and make sure you see that you're got that U shape, and then place them all in place, uh, place the uh, bolts down into it. But now I figured out that really what works better, and what I'm recommending for you guys, the instructions are silent on the matter, is to not put the cam bolts in place. To go ahead, get everything lined up and dropped in and takes just a little wiggly. This one was really quite easy. Everything is square all the way around. You don't have like so much of one corner that doesn't want to quite line up. But this one worked just fine. So we have all six things set in place, and then it's a matter of getting them locked down, and that's where you use that little arrow and the plus and minus sign and the little U shape here. As you slide this in, you're going to go over that cam lock through where that U is, and then you'll be able to just lock it in place just like that. And they are designed to work that way. It's not a, uh, it's not a shortcut in any sort of a tricky sort of a sense. It's just a good technique. So you push it in, and in this case, I don't know if you can get a camera shot in here or not, but it's way in. If you can see my finger is flush here, that cam nut is not flush. It's all the way back in there. So a good, oh, looks like a little bit more than half an inch inset, counter set. So once you get it slid all the way in, Downward pressure to make sure your cam bolt is, you know, nestled in there. And you find that groove, get locked in place, pressure inwards and twist, and we are locked in place on that side. You see on this side, it honestly doesn't even hardly want to move there. This side it will still go up, but on that side it's now locked down. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of those that need to all be locked in place. One, two, three, four, five, and I have the sixth one was already done. So I'm gonna jump back to a back corner to the one that to me is always the most challenging, these two back corners that are sideways because you can't see what you're doing. That back wall, the two that are back here, they're actually the same as that we did before where they're just flush mount, so they're really kind of technically the easiest, so I can kind of save them for last. You want to make sure that you push it, that it just, when you know it has gone over, if you're pushing it in that same distance, you know, that full, I didn't measure it, but it felt like it's almost a little bit more than half an inch. Then find your groove with the tool, pushing the tool in and putting some downward pressure at the back. Righty tighty, and we've got it. That one worked very nicely. Same thing on the opposite side. Double checking that I'm straight up and down, so I'm going to be able to slide all the way in. That hole was a little bit tighter. It took me more pressure to push it all the way back to get that set in amount. Downward pressure with my left hand, a helper would help in that case. You could use a, you know, a kid or anybody to kind of lean on that back corner if your arms aren't long enough. And we got that one. One more of these deep ones up front on this side. There we go. And then just the two in the back. are locked in I'm not even worrying about reaching to the back or getting help because the table's already been pulled down. And there we go. Nicely tightened in. Alright, we have the entire cabinet 
Uh, one last little bit is that one screw that's part W. It's off in a bag by itself. We have lots of other wood screws that are similar but are much smaller. This one just comes out of its bag, goes up into that counter set hole. And if I had my screwdriver or my drill, you just zip it in. Grab it around over here. Nice camera work. I hope you caught my, my uh, plumber's crack on that one. No, but before we got it. Okay, good. Ta-da. All right, that's that. Let's switch quickly. See how quickly we can go on these drawers. Now, when you're unpacking, the drawers do get tedious. They are all repetitive, and each drawer gets 12 screws on the bottom and 8 screws on the side. That's 20 screws each. So that's 80, 80 screws. 10 times 8, 4 times 20. Five parts. We have the same counter set issue. If you'll notice on each of the two sides, so on the smaller ones, there are parts G and H. You need one G and one each for each drawer. You have a big hole side and a small hole side. Also notice that you have the front of the drawer is clearly defined by the angle cut. And the bottom of the drawer, and this is the most important thing to always keep in mind and double check, uh, is that you have holes, little pre-drilled holes for securing the base. So you can always define where the bottom is. So you always make sure that you have your bottom in the right position. That's what she said. Um, so lining up top side, top side, Bottom side, bottom side, big part of the hole, small part of the hole. You need the big part of the hole out because you're screw screwing through it so you can counter set, okay? Then we just need bunches of these screws. They give you pretty much the exact number. Occasionally, one of them I have two extras, another one I have one extra. I've not run into one with one missing. If you lose a screw, or if they give you one missing, it's an easy trip to Home Depot. It will cost you 59 cents if you go there. It's a little bit longer trip if you're uh, not so close and then the DFW Metroplex over to Elliott's Hardwell. They will sell you one individual screw if that's what you need. It's a great place. It will help you find exactly what you need. So I recommend Elliott's should you need a new cam lock, if you, you know, have lost some pieces, they, will, they can set you up with any of this stuff. Okay, so. I didn't talk you through it. I'll talk you through it a little bit more on the next one. You just want to make sure, using that big side uh, of the hole, that you line up the screw with the pre-drilled holes that you're going into. You're doing one side into the back. The parts are pretty easy to, uh, to identify. Let me, I'll pause and come back in a second. Let me start with the new one. You have a front. The front is slightly thicker, and it has a little lip on either side, which gives it kind of like a... T shape if you hold it this way. Um, it, it's nice because that little it, it that little overlap makes it where you don't see a joint, and it also it's a little bit thicker and that will come into play a little bit later on. You have a back, which is just a plain little sheet of wood. It's called number I on the three little drawers. It's called something else on the bigger drawers. Exactly the same, just a little bit wider. And then you have the two sides we showed you before, which. Both have the cut out towards the front, and then four holes, which are counter screwed on one side that goes to the outside. So you line up your back with one of your sides, with the back of one of your sides. The way you can make sure you're good is by giving just a little bit of finger, a little tiny bit of finger tightening into those pre-drilled holes. And you want to be somewhat gentle with your electric screwdriver. You do not want to overscrew these. It is into solid wood. However, it is, uh, you know, not super thick, super robust sort of material. So 
we already have our bottom facing the correct way. We have our next one lined up here. And it's just a whole lot of this. You stick your screw in place, you line it up with the hole, and you give it a little bit of a finger tightening. Certainly on your first few, until you get really, really used to it. To make sure that you are in the hole. Once you have it finger tight, you can tighten them on down. You'll see it kind of square itself up if you do that. And you don't want to over tighten them. Then the top is the same thing. This is what I sometimes forget to look for on my top. It's very, very easy to put your top in place like this. It fits perfectly. The holes line up perfectly. Except when you go to put your bottom on, you see there are no pre-drilled holes here. So you always be mindful to look for your bottom holes. I have done it on average one drawer per assembly that I've done. We'll see if I make that mistake in this video. I hope not to. It's nice because the wood is not so thick that there's always is just a little bit of give to it. So you really can line things up really quite easily. It's not rocket science. Take your time and have fun. You can have the TV on. It's somewhat hard to post on Facebook as you do it. But that can wait. One basis down. I will probably not talk much when I do these next three. And then I like to do, I think the instructions would have you do one drawer at a time. All the bases are the same. All of the floors are exactly the same. So I find it's a little bit quicker and a little bit more, goes a little bit more smoothly for me if I just uh, keep going. Now, you'll notice I did know where my bottom was and I knew where the top would have been here. And so I went to go line that up, but then I said, oh wait, that didn't work because my inset screws are on the wrong side. Well, that's because that one goes over here. So then you go get the other one and you'll see your bottoms, you saw the bottom on the bottom, the side to the side, and you have the screws facing the right way. The, the screw holes oriented the correct direction. Sometimes I use a little Tupperware cup with all the screws in it. It's not a bad idea, especially because there aren't a lot of extras. I don't have one right now, though, so. Take that for what it's worth. Advice given, but not taken. We'll see if it comes back to bite me at the end if I'm missing a screw. One time, one time I was assembling one of these, I'll have to cheat a little bit, and I could not find my last screw, and it's because my screwdriver has a very nice magnet right here, and I couldn't find it because of that. Alright, this is me remembering to check for the bottom holes before assembling the front. Every time, if you hear me keep repeating that, it's because I've been burned.
number three. The instructions are good. The English is fine on them. Uh, there's nothing tricky, but they honestly, they, they are not patronizing, uh, perhaps to a fault. They kind of assume you know how to use the cam lock very well. So I hope that my kind of talking through those could have been of some use to some of you guys. And similarly, like the reminders about which way the bottoms go and stuff like that. It's certainly not going to appear in the directions. Sometimes I did. I have done it this way, and I kind of like to. I go ahead and put my front on in place, just let it sit there, and that makes me feel like it's nicely squared up to begin with. What's the question? Yeah, I know that's upside down. Oh. Good point. Maybe that's what's gotten me in the trouble in the past. Right now, I'm just using it as a prop, but notice my holes are facing upwards here, so I will have to reverse that. If I were to just suddenly go and screw right into that side, that would be a problem. I'm just using it as a prop right now, which always, to me, feels a little bit more solid. I'm used to it after a few things, but the, I remember the first time I assembled one of these, uh, feeling, as I assembled that second side in place, uh, feeling a slight, like it was slightly awkward and unwieldy to have this thing kind of flopping around, like I wish I had a third hand. So you can use that as a prop for the third hand, although you got to make sure that you get it facing the correct direction before screwing it, in place, screwing it into place. We are almost three-fourths of the way done with the assembly of the drawer frames. The last one happens to be parts, looks like L, M, N, and O. Part numbers are really not that important, it's exactly the same. Counter set holes with the bottom facing towards you guys means that it's going to have to have the bottom facing yours this way, and it's going to be this side. One side onto the back. All you, all you really need to think about. So the first thing you just kind of make a little bit of a TP to make that 90 degree angle, and it works pretty easily. And again here, I think I will go ahead and uh, use this as an upright brace. I even did it facing the, same, the correct way this time. Because to me, it makes it a little bit easier to get these screwed in. If it falls, it falls. That's why I actually have a hand on it too. I finger tighten that hole a little bit because I didn't have it up to see, just to make sure that I'm on the hole. If you're in the pre-drilled hole, it will never give you any trouble. It will always just thread it right in. Let the uh, let the screw do the work. You're not really pushing down at all. Screws work as a lever wrapped around a cylinder. Is that right? No, a ramp on a cylinder. And the ramp is doing the work for you. You have little kids that want to help it's okay you really do need to monitor them especially on the next section when you're doing lots of drilling 12 holes per base but there are preset uh, holes and I'm going to show you guys in a minute 
why you have to be very mi more mindful of them there. It has to do with the felt bottoms on the drawer, on the drawer bottoms. Felt lining on the drawer bottoms, I should say. So we can take a look at that now. Last step. I'll back up a little bit. All of the bases are exactly the same. They're all, I think, part K. They do have a sticker that does matter. I ignore all the stickers except for this one. That angle arrow points to the back, and that's just how they line it up when they set the jig in place. One side is the same white material. The other side is the same white material, but they put a felt base over it. Okay, the felt base is very nice because it makes the slides work very well. It's a little bit tricky because you can't see through it. So you actually are literally poking through that hole. The holes, the screw holes, are big enough to accommodate the screw here, and then they're just pre-drilled down there, right? So you're pushing through that felt, and the felt will help it line up, but it also kind of blocks your vision so you can't see what you're going into. To complicate matters a little bit more, you might have to move at least to, to get this. The way it lines up is pretty flush front and back, more or less flush, but the sides overhang a little bit. So I've got a uh, tip of my finger on both sides, and that should line it up right, but you have to be very careful. The reason you have to be very careful is because this wood is pretty thin, and if you were off in between where that hole is and where the uh, sidewall is, if you were over by less than a sixteenth of an inch, it could very easily, or at an angle, shoot over in and you have a screw sticking in the bottom of your drawer. You won't like that. So here is my little tip in that regard. If you will recall at the beginning of the video, I pointed out that the front piece, which is that piece that is the T-shape, is slightly uh, wider, slightly thicker. That means you have a little bit more margin of error. And so that's where I start. And as I said also before, they do a really very good job using setting the jigs in place where they're drilling their holes. So things do line up reasonably well once you start um, in those first holes. So that's where I start. I start in one of the corners on the front. Again, mindful that the arrow goes backwards because that's how they have the jig when they set it up and that's how it will line up best. I push the screw in, just flush here. You'll see that it's going to counter set in a, in a second. And I line up that one with the hole, set it down, and give it just enough of a twist to have it finger tight in place, but where I can still lift it up. I go to the other front corner and do a very similar maneuver where I push all the way in through the felt. Don't be afraid, it's just there. Line it up with that hole, which is easy to see. At least I'm not sure if you can come around here for just a second. But you'll see as you come up here, you can see the screw sticking out, and you just line it up with that hole just like so. And it, then you kind of have it just there in place. And then welcome back for the final concluding episode. Uh, we timed out again. Uh, I'm not quite sure where it left off. I've lined up two of the screws directly into the holes, making sure they get them a little bit finger tight. And you get your trusty screwdriver out, whether you're twisting by hand or not and screw it in and you will know when to stop because you will feel the pressure but it countersinks down in there just like it did on the side holes that, that is counter set uh, holes to make the screws below the surface so it will not affect your gliding you do not over tighten because you're going into a thin piece of wood once you have two pieces set you're theoretically square all the way around i am not going to trust that i'm not even going to trust it with the first three I still wait and kind of make sure I feel a little bit of finger tightening. And I always feel safer going from the front to the back. It has worked out well for me. So I would recommend doing the same, partly because you can kind of still lift up the back and kind of see that first one. Make sure that you're lined up nicely. Slight finger tightening. Same thing on the opposite corner. Feel it right there. Finger tightening. And go. And then the sides, it's the same story. You can't see it anymore. You do kind of want to make sure that you have a good feel. The, the curse of the um, felt is 
that it also holds it upright, so you might think that you're in the hole when you're not. So you actually have to kind of wiggle around until you feel that you're actually in the hole and give a little twist, at least until you get very comfortable. You might see me skipping that step just a very little bit as I go through the rest of these. But I will feel it, honestly, you get to where you get a feel for it, uh, and you can feel that you're in the hole just as you nestle it in place, even with the drill in your hand. So as you get a feel for it, you will get a little bit quicker. But if you're only doing one or two of these, take your time. I, wasn't, I was not screwing in there, I was just going through the felt and gave it a little twist to get through it easier. And then I did make sure, I just hesitated for a second to make sure I was square and in that hole, as I advised you guys to do. And that is 12 is screws. Wonderful? Pardon me? Oh, did I forget one? That was 11 screws. Would have ended up with an extra screw at the end and wondered where it came from. I thought I put one in there. Oh, I didn't. I did the front, all three in the front, and then the back. If I had too much temper paint, so looking through, you'll see there are no screws sticking out. So we were successful. And then, you just put it in place. My little sister is getting a couple of these, made a good point. She's using a few of these in her mudroom up in New Jersey. And she's also getting one extra one that she's going to use just like this with only one thing in the bottom. She's going to put a recycling container in there. So that's going to be their nice pretty recycling container and they can stack, you know, other stuff on top. Uh, let's see. That was the big drawer. It goes on the bottom. The others are all exactly the same. So this will be a tedious process once again. I'll try not to over talk it. Starting in the front again. Boring work. Arrow to the back. So it's flush to the front. I know I'm in the hole, and it, but you it felt also equal on both sides with the overhang. See there, I've got a tricky magnetic uh, screw situation where the screws are trying to escape. describe knowing that you're in the hole is that you do feel the screw doing the work rather than you doing the work. And the screw's not having to overwork, it's going into the guided hole, it's not, you know, cutting its whole way through. feeling the hole, so I can give it a peek. Since we we're still lining up those first few. And I know I'm on it, it doesn't want to thread in. It's probably a little piece of a uh, wood on the hole, but it is on it. We are straight up and down. There we go. Even if you feel like you're not quite straight up and down when you're starting, those, that's what those guide holes are there for. They will work with the screw, line it up, and suck it right in place.
funny because sometimes like on that center one, like, I felt like just, like just a little piece of wood that was like stuck onto the bottom of the felt in that hole. So it was kind of a little bit tricky to get it to line up. So just take a little bit of play. That is what that is what one reason that you do need to kind of slow down. I'm not sure the overall assembly time. It's pretty close to an hour uh, for me now. It was probably about an hour and a half on my first one. You guys are probably a lot faster than me, though. Not after they watch this video. You think I'm slowing them down? I think it's slower to demonstrate it. Should you accidentally come through a side door, side panel, by cut angling in, don't be concerned. Unscrew the screw, push it back in place. A little liquid paper or white marker or wood glue. No one will ever notice. You're gonna have these drawers full of stuff anyway. done so far. Did 2 times 20, two doors are all the way done, it's 40, 8, 6, 54 out of the 80 are done. Not quite finding the hole. Take our time, find it. checking that one. Never quite felt perfectly right, but it was fine. Dear wife pointed out that one of them bubbled out a little bit on this side, and that maybe that's why that other one didn't quite work. So we're going to pull that screw and just reinsert it, and it will always have a slight flaw in the very back corner. It 
was because I was noticing before I didn't mention this one hole kind of seemed to be back a little bit. So I was just maybe just a little bit off somewhere in that alignment. So we don't want to push through the inside. This is just on the outside of the drawer. It's not that important structurally. There's really not much to it. I'm just going to make sure that I've reduced that bubble a little bit. And we could kind of secure that. I mean, it's still a little bit there. What are you going to do? The drawer looks great from the inside. No one's going to see that slight little bubbling right there. That's the first time that's happened. So hopefully it won't happen to you. Our phone is ringing. Leander, Texas is calling. I don't know anyone in Leander, except for some telemarketers. So we're going to push that button. Sixty done. Twelve to go. No. Sixty-eight done. Twelve to go. wall. Line up this back section carefully. We do not want another bubble. In the hole. Number of screws this time. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. We have one extra screw, which is not because I forgot that one. I did find it in place. It's just that, like anybody, it's going to set their margin of error. They're going to set it up to give you an extra, not one too short. So they really don't try to give you an extra. My friends, is it. Last two drawers to insert. And we're going to call it a job done. Wish you luck in your assembly. Remember to take your time. Remember to get those holes facing towards the bottom when you're assembling the drawers. Take care with the cam box pushing in and down. And it will all work. Beautifully, you'll get a great way to hold your 
landline, telephone, or whatever else you want to store.